Hi, I'm Tim and welcome back to this video series. If you've been following along, then you'll know that we've already done part one where we set up this, which is our SM Light SL ZB MR3, which is a combined Zigbee and Matter Overthread coordinator all in this one device. Now, if you haven't seen my first episode, then you might want to take a look at the video before this one where we get this ready for adopting into Home Assistant. So in this part two, what we'll be doing is getting this adopted into Home Assistant and set up for a Zigbee network. And then once we've got the Zigbee network set up, we'll be adopting this as an example, which is the inner SP242 smart plug. Now, don't forget, there's always information, links, and chapters and useful information in the video description of all my videos. So if you want more information, then take a look at that information in the description. And don't forget, I'll have part three coming up soon after this one, where we'll be getting this set up for our Matter Over Thread network and adopting a Matter Over Thread smart plug. So keep watching and we'll get right to it now. All right, and here we are at the computer screen. And as you'll see, I've logged in to Home Assistant and we're currently at the overview dashboard here. So you'll see we've just got my username and the current weather forecast for here in the UK. In the second tab, I've opened up the SLZB MR3 control panel, as you will see now on screen. So what we'll do is first go back to the Home Assistant tab. And just to confirm so that we're talking the right language, what we'll do is go into settings and then click on about. And for this to confirm, I'm using Home Assistant and it's the core version 2025.7.1. The supervisor is 2025.06.2. And for the operating system, it's version 15.2. And the front end is 2025.07.2. 0.1 and which we're using to configure and set up our Zigbee network. So what we'll do first is we've already connected the MR3. So the SLZB MR3 has already been connected via Ethernet to my network, hence why we've got the control panel up on screen. So what we'll do is go back to Home Assistant and we'll go back to settings at the left side. Then what we'll do is select devices and services. Now, as you'll see, it's discovered various items on the network, MQTT and of course the SLZB MR3. So what we're going to do to add Zigbee Home Automation is we're going to click on Add Integration in the bottom right corner. Then what we're going to search for is Zig. So type in Z or Z, whichever you like to refer to it as IG, and you'll see we've got Zigbee Home Automation. So select Zigbee Home Automation, and then what you'll get is a message saying select a serial port. Now, what we're going to do is select enter manually for the serial port, and then select submit. Now you'll see we've got various radio type selections here. So what we're going to select is ZNP, which is the second one down for Texas Instruments ZStack ZNP protocol, for CC253X, CC26X2 and CC13X2. So select ZMP by putting a dot in the option, then select submit. Then in the serial device path, what we're going to enter is socket. So the word S-O-C-K-E-T. Then we're going to enter a colon and then two forward slashes and then what you're going to do is go to the SLZB dashboard. So we've opened up that tab, scroll down and you'll see we've got Ethernet status. So what you need to do is copy the IP address that's shown here. So just highlight it and then copy it using Control C if you're on Windows and then go back to the Home Assistant tab and in the serial port settings after the word socket and the colon and two forward slashes we're going to paste in the IP address. Then what we're going to do is enter another colon, and then we're going to enter 7638. 
Now, 7638 is the port that Zigbee is running on for the SLZB. Now, to confirm this, we go back to the SLZB tab, scroll up to the top, and then if we go to Z2M and ZHA at the left side, you will see that we've got the CC2674P10 for Zigbee to NQTT. If we click on ZHA, you'll see we've got radio type ZMP. So we've got socket as SLZB MR37638. So this confirms that the socket number 7638 here is what we're entering in here on the Home Assistant serial port settings. So now in the port speed, you can leave that as default, which is 115,200. Then what we're going to do for the data flow control, we're going to leave that as the blank selection, which is the third one down. And then what we'll do is click submit, and then it should then create a Zigbee network. So now with the network formation box on the screen, what we're going to do is select create a network, then wait for the next step to load, which does take a few minutes. It takes probably about two or three minutes, but just be patient and it will go to the next step. Now you'll see we've got a devices created screen. Now this took just probably a couple of minutes on my system, but as I've said, it might take a bit longer. So just be patient until this devices created window appears. Now you'll see we've got the CC2652 Texas Instruments. It's showing the device name and it's asking for an area. Now, if you want, what you could do is pick bedroom, kitchen, living room, or whichever area you have, if you've already created other ones. So in this case, I'm just not going to bother with creating an area. And you'll see we've also got the same for coordinator, Texas Instruments. And again, we can put an area in. But in this case, what we'll do is just click on skip and finish. Now you'll see we've got Zigbee Home Automation appeared with two devices. So that means it's correctly configured and connected to our SLZB MR3. So now what we're going to do is we're going to restart the Home Assistant. So to do this, go to settings at the left side, go to system. And then in the top right corner, you'll see we've got like a power button symbol. So click this, then go to advanced options. And then what we're going to do is reboot the system. So just click reboot system and then you'll get a reboot system message confirmation. So just click on reboot and wait for Home Assistant and the server that's running Home Assistant to be restarted. This should take just a couple of minutes normally. You'll see it's saying connection lost, reconnecting. So we'll just wait a few seconds and it should reboot itself. So now you'll see it's rebooting and it's saying starting Zigbee Home Automation. Not everything will be available until it is finished. So just wait patiently for it to finish rebooting fully. Now it's saying Home Assistant has started. Now what we'll do is just refresh the web page by holding down the control key and pressing F5 on your keyboard if you're on a Windows system. This then fully refreshes the web page and you'll see that we've got Home Assistant started. So what we'll now do is go to settings at the left side then what we're going to do is click on devices and services again. Now you'll see in discovered, we've got MQTT as one of the discovered options. So what we need to do is click on add for MQTT. And then it's saying MQTT broker via Home Assistant add-on. Do you want to configure Home Assistant to connect to the MQTT broker provided by the add-on Mosquito broker? So yes, click submit and you'll see that we've now got success created configuration for Mosquito Broker. So click finish and you'll see it's now taken us into the MQTT Mosquito Broker screen. Now we've got the MQTT screen with Mosquito Broker and Platinum quality. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add a inner SP242 smart plug to our Zigbee network. So to do this, what you need to do from the left hand side, so with the MQTT still on screen, click on settings at the left hand side and then select devices and services. So under the configured devices, we should have 
Zigbee Home Automation. So what we're going to do is under Devices at the top, select this. So next to Integration, we've got Devices, Entities and Helpers. So select Devices and you will see that we've got Texas Instruments CC2652 and Texas Instruments Coordinator. So what you need to do is plug your smart device, whether it be a smart bulb or in this case, it's the inner SP242 smart plug. So make sure it's powered on and in pairing mode. So now the smart plug is in pairing mode or smart bulb, whichever you have, click on add device and it should then automatically detect your Zigbee devices which are in pairing mode. So once detected, they should appear in this screen here. So at the moment it's saying searching for Zigbee devices, make sure your devices are in pairing mode. And you'll now see that we've got initialization complete, the device is ready to use, and it's the SP242 by Inner. It's asking you to give it an area. So what you can do is give it an area for the room that the plug or smart bulb is in. However, you don't have to do this. So if you want to just skip and go back, you can just click on the arrow once you've finished selecting the area. Or if you don't want to select an area, just click back anyway. So either way, click back and you'll now see that the device has been added to the devices list next to Texas Instruments CC2652 and Texas Instruments Coordinator. So to configure the device and view information, all you need to do is click on the device and you'll see we've got a screen here with all the device information, controls, sensors. So it's sensing the voltage, power, current, and so on. So what you can do if you want to do an automation is create an automation scenes or scripts by clicking the plus button. And you'll also see that there's a logbook here. So that's how easy it is to add a Zigbee device into Zigbee Home Automation. So if you want to add further devices, all you do is click the back arrow. Then again, put your device in pairing mode and then select add device and it will then proceed to detect the device and then it will appear. Once you click the back button, it will then appear in the list here next to the other Zigbee devices. So that completes this part two of our SM Lite SLZB MR3 video series where we're adding Zigbee devices and also setting up Matter Over Thread as well. So in the next video, what we'll be doing is setting up the Matter Over Thread. So keep a lookout for part three of this video series and it will be released very soon after this episode. So thanks for watching. Hope you're liking this video series and I'll be back again soon with more videos. Bye for now.